r slash ask reddit. Teachers of reddit, how are you feeling about doing in person classes right now? I'm an elementary teacher and this feels like one of those situations where there's just not a great answer. If we teach from home, I worry about how effective ad teaching will be, how parents will manage that arrangement alongside their jobs. But if we do go back to school, all roads seem to lead to some form of madness. One point what happens if I contract COVID? Do I need to have two weeks of lessons prepared for a substitute at all times? Can there possibly be enough substitute teaching candidates out there to fill all the gaps left by COVID diagnosis or suspected COVID diagnosis or contact with COVID? Substitutes already do not make a living wage for their work, or if they do, it's barely so. I can't imagine they are going to be more enthusiastic about going to schools under these circumstances. 2. Point what happens if my significant other, also a teacher, at a different school, comes into direct contact with a student at her school who has COVID? Do I have to quarantine because I've had direct contact with someone who has had direct contact with someone who has COVID? 3. Our state released standards that basically said that if a student or employee shows a sign of COVID, they've got to go until they can prove they're clear. Signs include coughing. We obviously wouldn't send someone home for a random throat clearing cough, but what about when other sicknesses start popping up as winterneers? Will colds be presumed covered until proven otherwise? 4. Our state mentioned that teachers should socially distance from students. How do I effectively teach 5th graders from 6 feet away at all times? 5. Point I worry about my ability to communicate effectively for an entire day through a mask, considering the difficulties some of my students already had with listening. Add a socially distanced element that's likely going to have some of my students extended all the way to the back of the classroom, and I'm a bit concerned on that front. 6. Point selfishly, I've wondered where my breaks and planning time would fit. There's been talks about eliminating specials, things like gym, art, library, etc., and keeping students in the same room all day, including lunch time and perhaps recess. How do I get away for my own lunch or off-duty break slash plan time? 7. Point if we split schedules, some kids come on some days, some on others, how in the world will transportation work for those guys? A local district concluded that buses would have to make 8 runs to pick up kids in a socially distanced manner. 8 point bathroom breaks slash tissue slash drinks. Kids are kind of gross already. To maintain top flight cleanliness and social distancing, I feel an inordinate amount of class time will be devoted to routines. I envision super long bathroom breaks so everyone has a chance to have the bathroom to themselves time out of every hour to clean or wipe down laptops, manipulatives, desks, etc. We already spend a lot of time on routines, pre-covid, so doubling down makes me wonder exactly how much time will be left to actually try to teach. 9. Point what happens under a worst case scenario situation? Our student body has a lot of grandparents standing in as primary guardians. What happens if a student contracts covered at school and takes it home to their advanced age primary caretaker? Is our small community prepared to take responsibility for the preventable death of a student's primary guardian? 10 points if we go hybrid, some home, some online, who's in charge of managing each system? Curating online content was a job in and of itself, so how could a teacher be expected to go through full school days and then prepare online options for every subject? And how do we ensure those two components perfectly align? I have very mixed feelings. I really miss my students and can't wait to see them. I know that online learning isn't the same. But I also fear for their health and the health of their families. This is how parents of students are feeling as well. My 5 year old needs the social interaction and isn't getting it. That can't be replaced with online schooling, which, let's be honest also isn't going to be as good, because us parents can barely get them to eat dinner properly let alone try to teach them. In the end, it's frustrating, we will probably be putting the kids in school whenever the schools deem it's safe to open. But there's certainly apprehension. My 16 year old is scheduled to go back in August when schools reopen. However, we live in a state that's become a hotspot, Texas, and my son is autistic, with all the quirks and stims that come with it. One of his stims is to chew on his own fingers. His nasty ass fingers that come into contact with tons of random things every single damn day. 
we've tried to break him of it and give him things that are more appropriate to chew on, but it hasn't worked. And he's such a prolific chewer that chew L re lasts exactly one day. One day. He says he'll wear a mask if he has to, but he's not keen on the idea because it causes his glasses to fog up, which I understand because I hate my glasses fogging up when I wear a mask as well. While he did okay this past semester with online learning, there are certain things that the school is required to do, speech therapy, social counseling, etc, that they cannot do successfully or easily through a zoom meeting. They tried and I applaud their efforts, but it's not the same as doing it in person. I'm also not a teacher, so at least one subject, such as math, my husband had to help with, and it got frustrating when even he didn't understand what was being asked. My son is really looking forward to the sculpture class he signed up for last December when planning his school schedule for this fall. I'm struggling to see how he'll be able to be a part of that class while at home. I'm also struggling to see how they'll be able to do other electives like theater. My son's second elective choice was tech theater, band, choir, student government, debate. How do you do those successfully with distance learning? Because I feel that they are still an important part of a student's life. I was a choir and theater kid and some of my favorite memories from high school were things I did in those classes. I'm also scared for my personal health. I'm sort of immunocompromised because I have autoimmune issues. I don't know what would happen if I got sick, to be honest. I don't know if my body would be able to handle it since my immune system is already at war with itself on a daily basis. I worry about my husband, who is in less better shape, health-wise, than I am. I'm worried it would kill him and I'd be truly fucked because I'm scared I wouldn't be able to handle things alone. We've been together since I was 18 and he was 21. We are 42 and 45 now. How do you move on without the one person in the entire world who is your entire support system? We have life insurance, sure. But money cannot replace the one person you've relied on for more than half your damn life to help you get through shit. I'm scared. But I feel like we have no choice in the matter but to send him back to school. In the UK, English, secondary schools are, are due back in full in September with no expectations of social distancing and very little guidance for risk assessment. I work in the worst affected borough of London, where huge numbers of our kids have lost family members. Over 50% of kids live in poverty. We have the highest levels of gang crime, radicalization, sex trafficking, child abuse, and neglect, and only around 5. 10% of kids in classes have had access to internet for remote learning since we went into lockdown in March. Many I haven't heard from at all. Social services and child protective services are already overwhelmed. I'm worried for myself and my colleagues as we enter precarious working conditions. But mostly I worry for the kids and their community. We cannot go back to normal and many will be deeply traumatized. When I try to talk about how anxious I feel, nobody in my family or friendship group understands. They just tell me to stop worrying and enjoy my summer break. Edit. Edited to clarify UK slash England. Situation is not the same in Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. Also, thanks for badges and gold guys. Didn't realize my ranting could garner such support. My wife is a principal, and she's been at her school every day, including during the lockdown slash quarantines, trying to figure this out. I fear for her health and safety, especially her mental and emotional well-being. I see the enormous amounts of stress being put upon her, and it kills me that I can't help. There are some truly cruel parents slash people out there who feel they can treat my wife and her staff like trash because, well, I don't know why. I'd imagine most are just as frustrated as she is, and they are just taking it out on the school, but some are just self-centered, entitled assholes. Why make an already difficult situation harder? Despite what some might believe, teachers and staff haven't been lounging around at home, mailing it in and collecting pay, if anything, they're working harder and longer than ever. Given almost no notice, teachers and administrators had to completely redesign what school looks like almost overnight, and they succeeded. Kids were learning, children were being fed, needs were being met in the midst of a global crisis. No state agency did that, no so-called national experts on curriculum. The local educators fixed it in hours. 
Our government, with its infinite power, wealth, and resources, has done nothing but pretend the problem doesn't exist. In fact, state and federal policies actually made things more difficult, but local schools figured out how to get around that too. No complaining, no protesting, just solutions and amazingly clever plans. Remember that the next time someone tries to convince you that teachers don't deserve better pay and benefits. Remember that the next time someone tells you that teachers have it easy or try to persuade you that educators are not among the smartest, most ingenious people in our society. Everyone needs to read your comment. I'm a teacher and I'm guessing we are in very different locations, but I swear you could be describing my principal slash district slash school slash experience. I'm so fed up with parents who say their kid deserves to be educated in the classroom. What the hell? What kid doesn't deserve this? It's not about what kids deserve, it's about trying to keep people safe. I'm painfully aware that there are other concerns that are just as valid. Abusive home life, lack of resources, social isolation, lack of learning. But how are we as public education supposed to fix all of that? We didn't ask for this virus. It's not our fault people are fighting against every CDC guideline meant to help get kids back in the classroom. I have had parents say to my face without a mask on that it's despicable that we are depriving their kid of an education. I'm sorry I worked literal 12 hour days this spring to educate your kid in a setting none of us were ready for and be mad that their kid might not get their regular athletics season. You can't have everything right now, okay? We're all sacrificing. Is this what any of us wanted? No. But stop putting all the burden on educators. We are broken over what this is doing to our students. But that doesn't stop the virus from spreading. And I'm not willing to err on the side of complacency about this. I hope we are overreacting with masks and closures. I do not think we are. But isn't that what we have to do?